Hello everyone, my name is Ilirio and today I want to show you this super simple dead coral farm that I made. This farm generates normal coral, wait for this to die and then they are pushed in the middle to be mined by the player. After explaining how this farm works in more details, I'm gonna tell you why I think this farm is not as useless as you think and why I think it's even better than a normal coral farm. So when you are in a warm ocean biome, if you bone meal a block inside water, it can create corals. So here I'm using one dispenser with bone meal and another one with water. Then I'm triggering both dispensers at the same time twice, with an A game tick interval between both. But just like this. And then it creates coral. You can also change this with a piston to have 4 game tick of interval between both pulses. And it also works. But sometimes you can't have nothing generating, it's because it's kind of random, so most of the time you have coral and sometimes you don't have anything. So there are multiple ways of doing it and I'm gonna stick with the 8 game check interval between both pulses because it's simpler with the system that I have here and you also don't have to trigger the two dispensers at the same time, it's just easier because you only need one observer. And in our system I'm gonna have the observer here so it will half power this dispenser and QC power this one. So then once this is done you have to wait for the coral to die and then send it to the player. And a coral can take up to 100 game ticks to die. And now if you add these two pistons, you can first pull the coral down and then push it on the side. You can technically remove this one and only have one module instead of the two. And then the player will stand here and only mine one side. But I think it's better to have a dual setup like this because it doesn't make the farm a lot more complicated, but it's twice as fast. So here I need to trigger first this piston and then later this one to push it on the side. And for that I'm gonna use something like this. So I will have a dropper here, a repeater here on 6 game ticks, and then an observer here. So if there is a coral, it will get pulled down and pushed. And this piston needs to extend long enough so the player can have time to mine the coral. We have to make sure that we can input bone meal to this dispenser, so you need two hoppers here. And you can use these hoppers to send a signal, so if you have a solid block here and an observer, this observer will lock the hopper and send a signal to the other observer. But we also have to remember that the top part needs to be triggered twice, but the bottom one only once. And you can have two inputs for that, one at the top and one at the bottom, but I wanted to have only one to make this smaller. But with this layout, if you send two pulses with a short interval, it will trigger the top part twice, but since you have a lot of delay with this repeater, it will only trigger this piston once, the bottom piston will be triggered twice, but the second time it will be blocked by the top one. Now let's try with 6 game ticks between 2 pulses. And as you can see this works. But the issue is that this observer is half powering this dispenser, meaning it will also trigger the dispensers in the adjacent slices. And this can cause issues, but it doesn't break it if you change this to 4 ticks instead. So now let's try it again. It will still work, it will just be a bit slower but at least it will not break. But yeah, that's basically how this slice works. And I forgot to mention this dispenser which is triggered by quasi-connectivity is updated by this piston and this dropper here, it can also be a dispenser but dropper is cheaper, is also quasi-powered by this observer. So now you just need to change this with an observer and have each slice trigger with the two game ticks of interval. There is probably a way to make this model but I think you would have to change the general layout for that. And as of now I'm pretty happy with the size of it, I just don't really like to have this extra observer on the side. And so the only difference with this farm here is that I have the repeater on 4 ticks of delay. It's because you need to have 4 ticks on the first one, otherwise it can break. And I decided to have all of this in 4 ticks so it's easier for the player to mine the blocks. So the only thing that you need to add to this farm now is a clock so you can wait 100 game ticks before harvesting the corals. And for that I use this pulse extender. So in the beginning it's turned on, it will go down to zero and then trigger this slice. It will also send a signal on the other side to trigger this slice. And we need to have a bit of delay between the two because we need to wait until this piston extend to start extending this one. Otherwise the player won't be able to mine all the corals. And then I'm sending the signal back to this piston which will reset this pulse extender. So you can see it watching now. It's pretty quick. Now it will trigger this, send the signal, and go back again. Let's watch it again. 
So here after the water is removed there is exactly 100 game ticks before this piston pulled the corals. Okay, so why do I think that this farm is actually useful if you're only using coral to build TNT duplets? Well, it's because most people use Lightamatica when building wall details, which is the machine that usually has the most amount of corals. And it's a lot easier to build with Lightamatica when you have the correct blocks. That's why I think it's better to have the dead corals directly, even if they will die anyway. Cause I even see some people placing the corals down, waiting for it to die and then collect it so it's easier to build the wall details. And you may also think that this farm is worse because it's slower and more complicated to build. But the thing is, it's not that complicated, it's just a bit more expensive. And it may be slower, it's only 4500 dead calls per hour, but it's actually a lot more than what you need. If you want to make a random distance wall editor, you don't even need 100 calls. And another huge benefit is that it doesn't use a lot of bone meal. It's less than hopper speed, which is a lot less than the regular coral farm. Okay, now let's start with the block by block tutorial. So you can first start with the sticky piston at the bottom. You can have five of these on each side. Then you can have hoppers in the middle. If you only have these ones, it will technically work, but you will lose about 20 items per hour. It's not a big deal, but if you want to collect all the items, you can have a second row of hoppers below. Then you can place a chest at the end. Here you can place the observers facing that direction and you can have droppers on top. Normal piston on top of this and then repeaters on 4 ticks. Same thing on the other side. Then you can add these observers. Observers looking at these ones. And also this observer. Here you can leave this empty because you need to have a block and the repeater on top. And we need to have four here. You can add dispensers on top of the piston and hoppers behind. Place one hopper facing down and the other one facing the first one. Just like so. Put solid blocks on top of the observers and then other observers here looking at the hoppers. And at last the dispensers facing down. You will need water buckets in the top dispensers but it's best to place them at the end so you don't break anything if you trigger this by mistake. Then you can do the same thing on the other side. In the middle you can add the fence gate and I forgot to mention the fence gates are here to block the water and they are not solid blocks so no coral can generate on their side. And you can replace them with any block that is not a full block and that can be waterlogged. At the top we're gonna add more hoppers and a storage for bone meal so you can add more chests if you want and you can place composters on top of the hoppers if you really care about that. Then you can go here and place a block for the player to stand on and then a trapdoor facing this side. Then you will have three observers. You will have a glass pane, this can also be a wall and a trapdoor facing the glass pane. This needs to be a solid block, then sticky piston here and an observer. Then you can place the slabs, one comparator and two here can place the two redstone dust and two solid blocks. And having redstone dust on a block that is not solid save a bit of the lag, even though here it's not really necessary. You can add a lever on this block, this is the on off switch. Then you can add this observer, a solid block, a trapdoor, a glass pane, another observer and a solid block. Then an observer on top of the trapdoor solid block and a slab. This needs to be a slab or any block that is not full otherwise there will be coral generating on the side. Then you can place the repeater on 4 ticks, a solid block, a piston which needs to be a sticky piston and a redstone block. And then the farm is done. You just need of course to add the bone meal 
and the water buckets in the dispensers. Before ending this video, I want to quickly discuss the possibility for a faster dead coral farm, up to making one that produces 72,000 per hour. And this would be the maximum speed because this is as fast as the player can mine. So I tried a few ideas and one of them was to have kind of a conveyor like this, so you have the coral generating inside, and then they are pushed after 100 game ticks. The conveyor is 12 blocks long because of push limit, and then all the blocks are sent here. And then the idea will be to have some kind of conveyor to send the blocks down. So you stack multiple of these modules vertically, and you can also have these on the other side, and then push all the coral down or up to the player. And the end result would look like this. This is another layout which is a bit bigger, and it doesn't really work. But the idea would be to have enough of these to make sure you always have a coral each stick. And I think that would be kind of complicated, especially since they are generating randomly. But it wouldn't be impossible, I already saw some people doing this kind of farm on Bilibili, but I thought it would be good to make my own. But this type of farm on the other hand wouldn't be as practical because it would be a lot bigger than a normal coral farm, and I think it would just be a fun challenge. So that will be it for this video, I hope you like this more unique farm, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!